happy travelers! We are coming to you today because we are getting ready for a very exciting trip. We are getting ready to set sail on the brand new Disney Cruise Line ship, the Disney Wish. We will be on the July 22nd sailing. So by the time you're watching this video, we might already have some videos out from the sailing itself, like a full and complete ship tour, our room tour, daily videos, all of that. So be sure to keep checking back on the channel, on our playlist for the Disney Wish playlist, if you wanna see more information, more videos, more fun stuff from the ship itself. But for today's video, we wanna actually show you something that's relevant to all of Disney Cruise Line's cruises and sailings, which is the check-in process. So the online check-in process, not currently enabled in the Disney Cruise Line mobile app, which we are big fans of their mobile app. But if you actually click check-in in the app, it's actually just gonna take you to the website. So as of right now, it's all done online. Now, I've already completed our online check-in process for our Disney Wish sailing, but we're gonna go back through and show you the different parts so you'll know exactly what information you'll need, how you'll put it in, and what the process looks like like in general for doing that. So let's go ahead and get it started. Our check-in process for our Disney Wish sailing and your Disney Cruise Line sailing. Let's get it started. Okay, so when we first open up uh, on the website here and we're on our reservation that we wanna check in for, it will have all of our information there like the reservation number, the itinerary, the ship, stateroom, all of that stuff. And then we'll scroll down here. Now ours, again, obviously already says you're checked in because I've completed the process. Yours would not say that. It would have some other wording to, to suggest that you need to complete the check-in process. So I'm gonna come down here and click on modify check-in. Yours might say start check-in or begin check-in process. It's pretty intuitive. So you'll know exactly what you need to click. Either way, this is what it's gonna look like. We see Mickey there with the ship looking so cool. Uh, of course, again, ours says you're all set to sail with our port arrival form. Yours will not look like that until you complete the process, but that's how you know for sure that you're done when you receive that port arrival form. So we'll circle back to that in just a, just a few minutes here. So again, uh, kind of a recap there at the top of the sailing, and then we're gonna have all of these different sections. So it's here summarized in the overview. We have guest information, we have onboard account, travel plans, port arrival time, and cruise contract. Now there's also, as you see here, an additional section for optional forms, like if you have a special services form, you can complete that and submit that there as well. We're gonna be looking at these main parts here though, because this is the stuff that everyone will need to do for their online check-in process. So let's just take it one by one. We'll go down the ladder here. So we'll start with guest information. You see ours is already complete. It has both of us on there, but let's go inside and take a look at what you'll be seeing. When you're filling this out, this is the information you'll need. So if you already have an online account with Disney Cruise Line, some of this stuff may already be pulled in, like your name or your date of birth. If it doesn't have it, you'll just put it in, you'll be good to go. So uh, legal name that's gonna match your travel documents, very important that you want it to say exactly what it's gonna say on your passport, which is preferred, or your birth certificate or whatever documents you're using to travel with. So it needs to match that exactly what it says on there. Then your date of birth, then you'll have your home address, so you'll need to put in your full mailing, full residential address there. You're gonna have your contact information, so it's technically optional to list your email address or a phone number, but I highly suggest you doing so, because if Disney Cruise Line needs to contact you in regards to the cruise, some important information, something comes up, especially on the day of the sailing, anything like that, they'll know where to send it to. So I definitely recommend putting that in there. You can also add a secondary phone number if you wish to give them some more options. Uh, you can choose your preferred language. It, you know, I think if you're using the US website, it's gonna default to English, but uh, if you need to change that or if you're in another country, uh, you can do so there. Then you can put in your emergency contact information. Obviously, hopefully nothing comes up during your sailing, but if something does, and Disney Cruise Line needs to reach someone on your behalf that's not sailing with you, this is who you would wanna put in, their name and their phone number, what the relationship is that they are to you, so, so they know who they're talking to, they know who to get a hold of. And you can actually click the box here, it says use the same information, so if you just wanna have the same emergency contact for all guests in the party, you can click that box there and it will apply that so you don't have to fill it out over and over, which is really nice. Next thing we're gonna have, this is very important section, is identification. So whatever, again, whatever travel documents you're using, whatever identification you're presenting to board the ship, this is where you're going to do that. So you can actually upload that ahead of time, really expedites the process at the terminal. So we use passports. Again, that is recommended, not always required. 
but most of the time not required if it's a US sailing. But again, it is recommended. That's what we're using here. So we actually have the option to either take a photo of our passports or upload a photo. So if you've already, that's probably what I would recommend doing is taking pictures of your different documents ahead of time. And we're gonna get to this in just a minute, not to jump ahead, but you'll also take a picture of yourself to use as a, as a security photo. And you can actually upload those during the check-in process again to expedite things at the terminal. I would recommend probably go ahead and getting those photos done ahead of time. So then you can just hit upload and put them in. When I went to do our check-in process, we actually had some issues when we were taking our security photos where it would kind of glitch out and it wouldn't upload properly. And then I had to put all the information back in again and then try it again. So if you can just upload the photo, it, it might help you there. You then put in all the appropriate information. So for example, with our passports, first and last names, ID number, date of birth, and the expiration date, the country of issue, all of that good stuff. And of course, just because you're uploading it here during the check-in process does not mean that you don't need to bring it with you. You absolutely have to have those documents at the port, at the terminal to board the ship. So this is just helping to make things go quicker, but it's not a replacement. You'll still need the official thing when you travel. So very important to keep that in mind. Also another note, you've seen us do uh, check-in videos for Royal Caribbean with their mobile app, where you can actually scan in your passport and it uploads all the information. That's not what we're doing here. This is just a photo and then Disney Cruise Line has to verify all of that information. And they do give you the information note here that you must bring this stuff with you, like I just said. Uh, the next part is the security photo, what I was referring to just a few minutes ago. So it does need to be kind of, you know, just your just your face area, uh, as it says here, a recent forward facing color photo of yourself only from the shoulders up so we can identify you during the cruise. So as you see here, mine says your photo has been approved. You're all set. So they actually do that as well. If, when you upload the photo or you take the photo, if it picks up anything that could be an issue, it will say, it doesn't look like this meets our requirements. Are you sure? And then you can still hit yes if you think it's kind of just glitching and they'll review it and either approve or deny it. If it's denied, you just have to do a new photo. A lot of times though, if, you're, if you have the proper setup and you don't have any extra articles or anything on, like glasses, hats, you know, Chels likes to wear the headbands, none of that stuff. Try to take all of that off and just have it be you in your normal state. Uh, if it's good to go, once you upload it, it will say so. So again, you have the option to upload an existing photo or to take a photo in real time. I would recommend having the photo already done and just uploading it. It can make things go a little bit simpler for you. And then this actually explains all of the stuff that I was just saying about if a warning message appears, you need to verify all that stuff. So once you're done, you can hit save. You'll just do the same thing again for, for each guest. So I'm gonna go back to guest information here. That was my section. And then you see Chelsea's section is right there. So for each guest of the party, you'll put in the appropriate information, the documents and the photo. This is probably the longest part of the process, the most arduous part of the process. So once you get this part done, uh, it should really start picking up speed. So let's go ahead and go to our next section, which is the onboard account. This is how you're going to pay for things while you're sailing using that key to the world card that you use as your room key and all those other things you can charge to it as well. So your onboard account, you can set it up to be the same payment method for multiple people in the party, all of the people in the party, or just one, whatever you would prefer. So you have the option here to do a credit or debit card. You can set it up as a cash slash other account, which gets handled a whole different way. You'll have to go and settle that at guest services or charges paid by another guest if someone else has already put in uh, credit card information and you just wanted to use them, their stuff, you can do that. So we have our information there. We've already uploaded our credit card. You can do the same thing, put it in. It stores it on file so that if you charge anything on board or if you hadn't paid for gratuities or anything like that, um, it'll just get charged to that account. Again, makes things a lot simpler once you're sailing. Kind of taking, we're doing the work now to prevent the stress later, which is always welcome. And then here we have the payment coverage section. So basically this is saying, hey, Matthew Hoffman, you put your credit card in. Are you paying for yourself? Are you paying for others? How are you doing it? And you can check the boxes here. I pay for myself. I grant charging privileges too. 
and you can assign to the different people uh, that you would like to have them. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. And then you see here, you do have to, of course, give the authorization saying, yeah, they can charge me on this account and I'm good with that. These people can charge and I'm good with that. So that really straightforward. That part is so much easier. Now let's go to travel plans. So travel plans is going to let Disney Cruise Line know how you are arriving to the port and terminal and about what time and then your disembark, how you're leaving, do you have flights scheduled, all that kind of stuff so they know exactly what time to assign you for disembarking the ship, luggage pickup, all of those fun things. So you see we have each guest information here and they're actually gonna ask you specific questions. Are you flying in for your cruise vacation? We are not because we live locally to Port Canaveral, we are just driving. But I like that they think of all of the different ways. No, yes for both, yes only before the cruise, yes only after the cruise, so you did get those different options. And then you tell where you're going after your cruise. Are you going to a hotel? Are you going to a Disney resort, a theme park? Are you going to your home address? And you have that here, you can click that. And then it actually asks you how you're leaving the port terminal as well. Do you have a car parked? Are you doing a private transfer? Things like that, so, which, Ours actually says private transfer, even though we have a car parked at the ship terminal. So I am going to adjust ours right here in real time. I don't know why it said that. We will have our own park and uh, our own car to park there. But the cool thing here, as you can see, is I just clicked which guests share the same travel plans as you. I'm clicking Chels because we are traveling together, so it will be the same. Now, here's one of the uh, the most hotly, not debated, but asked about, I guess. One of the most talked about topics is port arrival time because remember back in the day a lot of cruise lines you just showed up whenever you wanted to uh, disney cruise line wasn't really like that you could show up but you would have to wait in the terminal until they called your boarding group a lot of other cruise lines would just kind of let you come and board whenever and now we're definitely seeing these port arrival times because they want to control how many people are in the terminal at a given time so that's what this section is for you'll have the different times listed here that you can choose from uh, i can tell that there have already been a lot of times that have sold out you can see we are selected for 11 30 to 11 45 a.m that was the earliest time available when we checked in so we chose that time you can obviously tell that these are in 15 minute increments and there's no way it jumps from 11 45 to 2 p.m so those times from noon to uh two o'clock those are those sold out. Uh, everyone grabbed those up so you would have these other options here. So this is what you choose. I get asked this all the time as a travel agent. How do we know what time we come to the ship? This is how. You'll choose it here and that's your time. And you're, you're welcome to come then and begin the check-in process. They kindly ask that you do not show up before that time. And depending on the cruise line, the terminal, the staff, whoever, you may not be allowed to. If you show up early, they might tell you have a seat outside and you're gonna wait. So definitely wanna show up at your selected time. And that's something really important to note here. Disney fans, remember fan is short for fanatical and that they are, they will be ready to go. They will know exactly when things need to happen and they will jump on it. So if you are concerned with getting an early arrival time, an early boarding time for your Disney cruise, recommend giving this the Cinderella treatment. If the clock strikes midnight, be ready to go. Get on, jump on, be ready to click, start check-in process, so at the very least you can grab your arrival time because I do believe you can choose that and save uh, without completing the rest of the process. I know you can do that for Royal Caribbean and other cruise lines. I think you can do it for Disney as well, but at the very least, just be prepared to do the whole process. Another reason why I think it's beneficial to have those photos of your documents and of each person's face ready to go, saved on your phone or on your computer, so you can just upload those. You don't need to go wake someone up or make sure everyone's ready or looking good or whatever. Everything's ready to go, upload them, drop the hat, get your early arrival time if you're concerned with that and you'll be all set. All right, so we have one last section here in our overview, which is the cruise contract. So it says you're almost done. It knows, it wants to, wants to keep you going. It's trying to give you motivation here. So this is the cruise contract. It's basically your terms and conditions. It's a bunch of fine print that to be perfectly honest with you, no one is going to read, especially because it's written in bold red which is just not aesthetically pleasing to the uh, the senses of the eyes there. So it's all the stuff that, you know, you have to agree to to go on the cruise. I'm not saying you shouldn't read it. You probably should. You probably should understand what all it means. But this is kind of the law abiding contract, you know, it's seal it and certify it and all that stuff. But anyway, it goes on and on and on and on. You can print it out if you'd like to peruse it at your leisure. You can email it to yourself. 
but you have to click this box here at the bottom that says I have read and understand the cruise contract and agreed to the provisions of the cruise contract on behalf of myself and the other members of my travel party. So that means you're good to go. Must be 18 years of age or older to agree to the cruise contract. So a cruise contract, I should say. So of course you have to be an adult. You can agree for minors on your behalf if they're part of your travel party. And then you're gonna hit complete check-in. Da, 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 because that was the last thing to do. And that brings us to port arrival form. So this is your ticket. This is your gateway to get on board the ship. Once you're on and you're at your room and you have your key of the world cards, your room keys, the things you can charge to, then you're switching to that. But up until that point, this is what you're gonna be using, that port arrival form. You're gonna show this at the parking garage if you're parking a car or to access the terminal. When you go through security, there'll be like usually another little check. They're not really checking you in because you've already done it here, but they're kind of just rechecking things. And this is what you're going to need. So it has your arrival time on the date they're listed, the ship name, of course, the boarding group. So that is actually what I was talking about earlier when you're in the terminal. It'll say now boarding groups one through four five through eight, whatever. And once your group is called, you're permitted to board the ship. So things don't get overly crowded. So important to note that. It also has your assembly station. You'll need to report there during the muster drill uh, on day one. Then you're gonna have these little QR codes that can scan for each person. So again, when you arrive, they'll check you in to make sure uh, they know who's there and who's getting on board the ship. And then it has some of your basic information below that, your reservation number, stateroom number, what category of stateroom you booked, your castaway club level, that's Disney Cruise Line's loyalty program, and then the cruise terminal address, which is obviously handy if you're not exactly sure where you're going, you can put that into your GPS or get directions via Google Maps or MapQuest if you're still using that or something like that. So Apple, Apple Maps, whatever. Um, and then they're just gonna give you some basic information at the bottom here, important reminders of do's and don'ts, like stay arriving at your arrival time, don't try to come earlier than that, bring all your documents, have the app downloaded, don't pack your documents and your luggage, that's an important thing, right? Your luggage will arrive to your stateroom much later, hours down the line on boarding day, so anything you need in the meantime, like a change of clothes, medications, documents, keep that all in your carry-on that you will keep on your person as you board the ship. Don't pack beer or wine in your checked luggage. Alcohol you're bringing on board must be carried with you, that kind of stuff, and no prohibited items. There's a list there. So there's links here you can click on, read the detailed ex explanation of each of those points, or get the list of prohibited items should you need that. Now, that's pretty much, once you get this, you're done with the online check-in. As of right now, we still have some COVID-19 protocols. So we're not really getting into all of that today, but just to give you a quick overview, Disney Cruise Line used to provide COVID testing at the terminal when you arrived as part of your cruise price, and they're no longer doing that. You actually have to schedule that ahead of time. I do think there's an option you can purchase testing through them, but they're not including it. It's not how it's done. You're responsible for your own testing now. And so as of right now, at the time of making this video, you'll need to have your vaccine cards if, you're, if your age group requires you to be fully vaccinated. You'll need to have those. You'll need to have your negative COVID test results once you get that test done within your allotted time frame. All of those things and you're going to use the Safe Passage website. So there's a link to that right here. That's what I really like when you get this port arrival form. They're giving you the link to that website so you can go there, create an account, put in all the information it needs and it will tell you along the way if you've done what you need to do, if you have everything that you need to have all of that good stuff. So that'll kind of keep you in track. So remember I said you need to bring your actual documents like passport or birth certificate, you need to bring your actual vaccine card, you need to bring your test results, all of those things with you. Even though you're uploading them through Safe Passage or the online check-in with Disney Cruise Line, you'll need to have the official things with you as you go to board the ship. So very, very important to remember. And then the last thing here, you can have a, there's a link to print the port arrival form. I do recommend doing that. You can also send yourself an email one common question I get is, can do we have to print these things or will a digital copy work? And a digital copy will work perfectly fine. You know, if you wanna just show it on your phone or scan or things like that, you can certainly do that. I do recommend printing copies if you're available to, uh, just for a couple of reasons. One, so you're not trying to rely on cell service or Wi-Fi, which when you're in a big building may not wanna cooperate. And also two, if they need to check anything or kind of make a mark or whatever, it's just easier on paper. So if you have that option, I recommend printing it, but it's definitely not required. It's not anything that's gonna make or break you. You can do it all digitally. So there you go. That's what you need to do to check in for your Disney Cruise. It is 
pretty straightforward process. Make sure you can get the photo, make sure you have your documents, put in all your basic information, choose that port arrival time, and agree to the cruise contract, and you're good to go. Have that arrival form ready, head to the port, and have an excellent time. We want to thank you for joining us for today's video. Hope you found it useful and informational as you prepare to check in for your Disney cruise. And again, if you're interested in seeing some videos from the brand new Disney Wish, we are setting sail in just a few days. Our sail date is July 22nd. So again, depending on when you're watching this video, we may be just about to go. We may be on the ship. We may already be back. And once we get back, those videos will start to come. And if you're interested in boarding the Disney Wish or another fancy Disney Cruise Line vessel, we can help make that happen for you. As travel agents, it would be our pleasure. Our services are completely free to you. We do not charge any fees or costs whatsoever. And your price will not increase a single cent than it would be if you book direct on your own with Disney Cruise Line. And then we'll be there to help you the rest of the way, answer all your questions, get you set up with everything. So if that sounds good to you, feel free to reach out via that travel agent information. You can find it in the description of this video. You can also visit our website, hoffmanhappytravels.com and reach out to us via that method as well. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today's video. Stay tuned for the Disney Wish videos coming your way. But we're going to sign off for now. We'll see you next time. Happy travels!